Have you been applying to what seems to be thousands of jobs, but nobody has called you back yet? Or maybe you have gotten the call back, but at the end, they decided to go with somebody else. If that is the case, I want to share with you some of the things that you can change if you haven't changed already to help you in this job market. To do that, I'm going to assume that you are in one of three categories. Category number one. You are someone fresh out of school and is wanting to get into this field with zero experience. All you have is a degree, whether that is a relevant degree or not, and maybe one to two years of non-related work experience. Category number two, you are a working professional and you want to transition into cybersecurity. You might or might not have some exposure to cybersecurity, but you know you want to transition into this field. And category number three, you are someone already working in cybersecurity and want to move on to another company or role. I'll go through each of these categories and I'll talk about what you can do. Category number one, fresh out of school. As a graduate, depending on what you majored in, you might have some experience in IT or cybersecurity. However, the knowledge that you've learned is likely heavily theory based. And that's not particularly a bad thing. But if you're experiencing scenario one, where you're applying to multiple jobs and not getting a call back, it is likely that your resume and or experience is not doing you any justice. Then what is the solution you might ask? Focus on projects that allow you to apply your theory to practical experiences. I've created many videos on this topic and essentially look around you and see how you can apply security to everyday life. If you wanted to learn a specific tool or understand how to triage, I highly recommend you take a look into some of the labs that are hosted on platforms such as Cyber Defenders. Continue to practice applying your theory onto practical learning opportunities as this will allow you to showcase your skills and projects that you've completed onto your resume to make it look more enticing. Now, if you are experiencing scenario two, where you get some calls, but at the end they decide to move on to someone else. This can mean a lot of things, but more often than not, the company likely went with an internal hire or went with somebody that is overqualified and being compensated on the lower end, making this a no brainer for the company to hire them. You might ask, well, how do I compete with that? And more on that later, because I truly believe that this will apply to all three categories. Category number two, you are a professional transitioning into cybersecurity. Are you tired of your job and feel like you're not making an impact? I sound like an infomercial, I'm sorry. <laughs> Over the course of my career, I've worked with many individuals whose background is not in cybersecurity or IT. In fact, they came from an accounting background or even an English major background. That goes to show you that you do not need a related degree in cybersecurity to be in this field. So if you're thinking, oh my God, I need to get a relevant degree. No, you don't, but it will make your life a lot easier. If you're applying to many jobs and you're not getting a call back, similarly to the previous one, it is likely that your resume or your work experience is not being optimized for the lack of a better word to the role that you're applying to. I'll give you an example. I've seen resumes where someone had been working in retail and want to transition into cybersecurity, but the resume shows no interest in cybersecurity or skills related to cybersecurity. But you might ask, well, of course they don't because they've been working in retail. But hear me out. In cybersecurity, especially if you want to work in a SOC, it is a fast paced and high pressure environment where you will need to be comfortable with multitasking. You need to have attention to detail as well as the ability to break down technical problems and translate that to non-technical audiences. In other words, you need communication skills. Now, if we take a step back and think, are these skills something a retail person would have or obtain over time? I think it does. Solution, if you are working in an industry that is not related to cybersecurity or IT, I really want you to think about your responsibilities and pick out the soft skills that you've learned and obtained over time, because those are extremely valuable and you want to put them onto your resume. As for showing interest in cybersecurity, you can do one of many things. The first one, you can enroll in a course from Coursera, and I recommend Google's cybersecurity program, which I'll link 
down below. Secondly, you can look into Security Plus or you can take Google's course and then take Security Plus. Or you can start doing labs or projects related to cybersecurity. That way you can put it onto your resume and start talking about it. But to get a higher chance of being seen by recruiters or HR, I highly recommend that you go and achieve your Security Plus. Category number three, security professional wanting to move on to another company or role. Let's face it, the unfortunate reality here is that if you want to increase your salary, you have to move to another company. Perhaps this is your reasoning, or you have a terrible manager, or your environment is just extremely toxic and you're not learning anymore. Believe me, I've been through all three. Regardless of the reasoning, moving to another company can be exciting and terrifying at the same time. You might have heard the saying, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. In other words, if you were to move to another company, it might suck. But you get a title change and a pay bump, hopefully. After applying to multiple jobs and you don't get a call back, what do you do? The solution, because you are already in cybersecurity and obtaining work experience, it is likely that your resume needs to be optimized to the role that you want. For example, if you are a SOC analyst and you want to move into DFIR, you have to put some experiences that are related to DFIR. Have you ever done network slash host-based forensics or performed root cause analysis? What about deep dive investigations into security incidents? Experiences like those are great to put onto your resume. Just like the others, think about upskilling and perform projects that are related to the role that you want to get to as this will allow you to stand out. Now I want to talk about scenario two again, where you get a call back, but at the end, they go with somebody else. One of the main reasons I see this happening is because of compensation. Companies have a budget and salary in mind, and whenever a candidate asks for a salary that is higher than planned, they tend to look elsewhere or higher internally. Now, if you fall under category number one and two, I encourage you to research what your average salary for that role is and aim for the lower end. Now, I know this might not always be possible, especially if you're in category number two, because if you have a family and you need to take care of them, family comes first. Let's just say you're making 80K in your current role. And if you take a pay cut for, let's just say 40K, that will do you more harm than good. For these situations, you'll need to shift your mindset and not think about transitioning into cybersecurity as fast as you can, but instead put yourself in a good position by continuing to develop your cybersecurity skills while completing related projects, as this will make companies want you and offer you a fair salary. As for category number three, you likely want to earn more money when you move on to another role or a company. So you have a couple options. The first option is to start specializing and become extremely good at it. The second option, network with others, network around you. In fact, this applies for all three categories. Networking with people in this industry is extremely crucial that surprisingly not a lot do. I personally wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for my networks. Attend conferences, workshops, summits, meetups, or even on LinkedIn and talk to as many people as you can. Show interest and learn from them. The last thing I want to say is that if you were to make all of these changes, will that get you a job? No, because nothing in life is guaranteed. However, it will put you in a good spot. The reality is that the job market currently sucks, especially for a junior analyst position because everybody wants to become a cybersecurity analyst. Take your time and focus on your skills because you are competing with thousands of people wanting to get into this field. You need to ask yourself, what makes you different than the rest? If you're interested, I do offer free mentorship on my site with no strings attached. There's also some products on there that can help you with your cybersecurity journey. And it is hard out there. It is up to you to ask yourself, do I really want this? And if the answer is yes, and you're ready to put in the work, I say, let's work together to help you get to where you want to be. And that is it for the video. If you found it informative, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious, 
and do things differently.